Then, welcome to today's webinar. The topic today is form finding and calculation of membrane structures in RFM6. My name is Andreas Hörold. I am responsible for marketing and public relations in the Dluba software company. For instance, the Dluba website, press releases, the German and English webinars, etc. I will be the moderator today. Yeah, and my two colleagues can introduce themselves. Hello, I'm Andreas Niemeyer. I'm uh, responsible uh, by Global for the development of the programs. And especially I take care about the programs for form finding and wind simulations. Stefan, you are muted. My name is Stefan Hoffmann and I'm still. No, 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 it's okay. Well, I would just uh, shut down my webcam. Yeah, my internet is a bit so sorry. I'm responsible uh, for the customer support and doing some uh, dynamic add-on development. And I will be taking care of the chat. Okay, thank you. Then we can close our webcam so that the attendees can see the full screen. You can ask questions via the control panel on the right side of your screen. You can enter a short question here and we will answer you. If you don't get an answer during the webinar, well, maybe there are too many, then you will get an email after the webinar. The other option is to watch the entire webinar and then email your questions to info at global.com. Then I hand over the screen to Andreas Niemeyer and he can continue. Okay, thank you Andreas. Then uh, I take over and start with our webinar about the technical part. Um, today I want to show you how we can deal with membrane structures in our new generation of M6. For this we planned four main points we want to show you. Um, at first, of course, how you can uh, model uh, form found shapes and work with them in the program. Then um, how we can organize these shapes to each other uh, with stages. And as third, how we can create wind loads um, according a CFD analysis on the structure. And finally, how you can design and document such type of structures. Of course, I can't do this completely for one project in one hour, but I want to give you an idea how this is working. And you see on the right side some pictures from top to the bottom. So um, because the new generation have a new input concept for these um, tools, I want to explain you this on a easy simple example on a cable at first then we go to a let's say hyper sail um, surface structure and afterwards we check or we use all these functions I explained on a more complex structure for such a stadium uh, segment and finally we take care um, about wind simulation on the complete stadium model what you see on the bottom. So. Don't um, lose some time and go into the program. I uh, change here to RFM6, our new generation program. <coughs> and for this, for this first part, we define a new model and activate um, the so-called form finding tools in the add-ons catalog here. And um, Yes, we want to override and how you can see if you go into the program it looks generally like the let's say past solution but as you will see we have some new changes here. So as mentioned we will explain all new features on a small easy example. I selected here a cable uh, example therefore let's model it. Um, I use a new member type cable um, with a cross section cable cross section let's select one from 
C library, for example, this PE cable with a um, PE material, cable material, we see equivalent stiffness. And define here a cable with the length of 10 meters between two points. That the cable will not fly through the air, of course, we have to define some boundary conditions. Therefore, I define here two supports. Now, um, this is the input for the model. As you see, simple cable. And on this structure, we explain now all features. And of course, what I always do when I explain form finding, I calculate the deflection of this easy example. Therefore, let's calculate the self-weight load case, what is always defined automatically in our program. If we run the analysis of this load case, we will get from the program, as expected, a deflection curve. Here you see 66 millimeters sag. Um, of course, we can um, deform the sag manually, or let's say scale. We can animate it. And of course, um, when I scale it to one, you will see that the deflection curve will maybe lie on the topology shape. And this is maybe the first point what I want to mention. Here in our new generation, we have a program that intelligence what draws the topology, so the cable structure in this case, on the deformed shape, in this case, with a sec of 66 millimeters. This you can change in the display navigator below the chapter, chapter model. Um, display topology on original shape and deform shape. The same you can change here with this button original and deform shaped. So this is a little change what should help to understand the model a little bit better. So and then next go to the next topic um, what means um, of course, we calculated now the static analysis. We see length of a cable of 10 meters and for the self-weight of the cable itself, which ended up in a 66 millimeter deflection with an internal force, maybe here, 0 0.33 kilonewtons. But of course, um, of course it, uh, um, it's a too small cable moment. Let's make now, because to show you the effects, I expect a bigger force here. Yes, 1.25. But of course, if you see the force here, um, you could say, mm, I, I want to simulate here in the program a cable with a longer length that I can reduce the normal axis force here. And this is possible with our form finding application. And for this, you have to define now, besides the, let's say, self-weight load case, a pre-stress load case. I call it P and define here an action category pre-stress. This is now the step in, in our form finding tools. And this pre-stress load, pre load case is now empty and should be filled with some boundary conditions. And we can fill it with the boundary condition for form finding. We can go to the member loads, to load type um, form finding and define here, for example, a geometric definition that we expect for a specific load, a sag or a cable length of let's say 0 0.2 meters. And if we apply this load, you will see it looks like a line load or whatever. And um, it indicates that we get here 0 0.2 meter sec. And of course, everybody could think now, yeah, it's defined now. And if I calculate this load case, we get a sec of 0 0.2 meters but we don't get it. We get at least a zero result for forces 
and a zero result for deflections. And this is clear because the program can't find a shape for a form finding condition, so for a expected deflection, without knowing in which direction it should run. Should it be should it be downwards, upwards, back or in front? So it needs a load for which the, diff, the shape is detected. And in this case, for example, if I take a look on the load case list, we can say, please find me the shape with 20 centimeters for the self weight, for example. It could be any other load also. But if I say for this load, um, I have to go to the load combinations and um, to define it. And for this, I deactivated first the wizard and go to the load combination and say, please combine form finding with self weight. And this means now for the program, because this combination one contains only this form finding pre-stress load case and any other load case that this is a form finding job for him. And if we run this analysis, the program searches a shape which fits to the conditions. It means he searches a shape where he can fill all, fulfill almost this condition 20 centimeters with a corresponding force. Of course, you see here, we don't meet the target completely. We have here 213 millimeters and not 200, but this is a cause of accuracy. It's maybe the standard definition for a specific size of model. If you want to have a more certain result, you can change the properties of the calculation. Um, this leads me to the next feature, how this is organized in RFM6. Um, therefore, we change to the properties and you saw we calculated CO1 and every load situation, maybe load combinations and load cases, have here a static analysis setting. What means, let's say I can assign to every analysis or load situation a set of calculation parameters. And these calculation parameters have here also a form finding sheet where I can define these settings. You see there are less inputs, we simplified everything a little bit and um, I increase now the pre-stress loadings to 50 and after confirmation and rerun we will get the 20 centimeters hopefully and yes we get it. So you see um, the program searched us the shape 20 centimeters with a corresponding force of 0 0.4 kilonewton. Um, so far this was our first form finding job in RFM6 and maybe you saw now that we got or we gave you as users a new might T or power in the program to work with shapes. At, in, in difference to our old solution um, we can now manage more shapes in one model because I have it now in hand of combination before it was only one. And this means now, if you imagine, this is now shape one, form finding one is G plus P, uh, P. And you say, hmm, I want to check in my model also another shape. Maybe um, the shape should base on a puncture load in the middle. So let's define here a load. For example, I call it N and give this load case maybe C type permanent nope. and define in the middle here uh, let's say a concentrated load with the size of 10 kilonewton in the middle of the beam and place it here exactly. And now let's create a second parallel shape besides this self weight based shape. So I go again into this load case and combinations dialog uh, into load combinations and create here now a shape maybe F2 
um, based on um, n plus p. And for this we only have to change here the input, so p and n in difference to the first one and if we calculate this you will see you can do in the same model another shape. What means we have the 200 millimeters in the middle but if we take a closer look um, you see according to this form finding load in the middle in this concentrated one we get such a triangle shape with a corresponding force and you can change in between both shapes. So this is not possible and gives you much more options to check your models or to create something new. So this is one point what I want to show you. So the next point was, and I remember to many questions on the support, um, how I can deal with partial safety factors in the program. Do you have a solution for it? And with the new generation we want to give you a solution. So I can say of course, we can create a third shape, for example, I um, copy the first one and say let's um, scale it up and define here 1.35 as factor and yeah, that we have a clear name 1.35 g plus p. And if we calculate this, the program knows I have to do a form finding with the form finding condition of 20 centimeters. It was not scaled up, but with a bigger surf weight load scaled with 1.35, therefore we get a little bigger force on the cable, not 0.4 and 0.56. And you see the program is ready for this. Of course, we we can also let's say um, scale the pre-stress. What means um, if I scale the pre-stress 1.35 and only for the name here 1.35 form 4 for example. This was form 3 only that we have a clear description and calculate then we can also scale the form finding inputs you see not 200 and 270 what is the factor 1.35 in between with the corresponding force again. So it's an easy game to work with different shapes in one program now. And this brings me to the next topic. Um, what happens um, if you want to use these defined shapes for further loadings, maybe surf weight, snow, whatever. And um, here it's interesting, you have to organize now which shape should be used for which load case. So define at first some additional load. I define here for example a variable load with any category. Let's take for example this red one. Nope. Now and apply for example 5 kN per meter on the structure here with a projected load. So, so far we have a load on structure. If I run this load, what happens without any further specification, the program applies this load on the 10 meter length long cable yeah? and not in any shape. But if you want to apply it maybe on shape one, you have to assign it. This means we go again into this dialog, load combinations, and say, please calculate, we give a name, uh, U on FF1. And this you can do if you define an initial condition or an initial state. So here you specify the shape, for example, shape one. Um, this means we overtake the geometry of mesh and the inner forces and to get a full set of calculation we apply also the outer loads 
form finding loads and the expected, let's say, additional load. And now, according to the situation that we have here defined that initial state as starting shape, you can, the program knows that this is no form finding jobs and only a pure static analysis job. And let's calculate this and take a look how this is looking and you see um, when we take a look on deflection, we have now deflection of 629 millimeters and this means this starting from the original shape. So this is what we inputted. This is the shape of initial state. This is our form finding shape and this is deformed shape is um, the loaded form finding shape. So the program gives you the option to manage all this stuff and um, of course not only for one shape then of, if you wish you can also apply uh, the same load on shape 2 what means we only change here to shape 2 and exchange here the load to n and with calculation we get uh, the same task only on let's say here original form finding shape 2 plus load is on deformed shape with 493 millimeters with a normal axis force of 177. So this is let's say our new philosophy of working with form finding tasks and organizing it in the program. And this brings me to the next point, how we recommend the standard work of, of using or the standard use of these tools. And for this, if you may be starting with a new project, of course, um, you don't want to test it like I just showed you. Then on a real project, I recommend, and for this we create here um, a new situation, so I delete all this stuff, um, go back to load cases and maybe let's remove this stuff and now um, we have this three load cases, a standard situation and in a standard situation I recommend that you use this stuff as with a combination wizard and uh, say please combine me all these load combinations automatically this means the program overtakes all this stuff but have to know what is my shape and if you have to define the program the shape we create it here as individual load case so we select both for example P and G edit and say this load case is shape 1 and now um, we give this shape one the pre-stress load case. Now you see we have two pre-stresses in it and we only have to use one. So I learn my action set pre-stress that this is shape, it's not needed, we only want to have a combination with P and go to the design situations and say our combination wizard, if you combine something, please consider always shape one or any other shape. Um, of course we have to use here Newton of some so far. So now if we go to load combinations you will see the program combines for us all combinations according rules of standards so ULS and SLS with factors without factors and you see in all combinations automatically the shape one is assigned and um, even here all load cases, um, the external loads also placed in the combinations. And with calculate all, you get all forces what are expected in this case. At first he calculates the shapes and then he set it up. So this is maybe the first introduction example what shows you how to work with all these tools in RFM6. Of course this is a special example because the shape for cables 
depends always on the form finding condition. So how big is the sack, for example, plus any load for which we have to detect the shape, the self weight, for example. But we, there exist different examples. Um, maybe the next is here um, desktop. Uh, a surface structure, a membrane structure. And I prepared this example um, only to, to show you it could also be work like this. So in this case we have maybe such a sail um, with typical load cases, surf weight, pre-stress and snow load. So for surf weight clear the weight coming from the material itself. For pre-stress we defined here, you see, the, let's say the inner pre-stress, the membrane tension by a surface load, like we just did it for members with load type form finding and defined here in X and in Y C3 kilonewton per meter. And you see if you're running this shape form finding job, you get here um, the shape of the membrane you get internal forces in the membrane what are almost uh, meet the defined three kilonewtons and if you want to combine all these three load cases in combinations as standard recommendation you go into the load case and combination menu um, define the combination wizard setting what is on in default um, and learn the, let's say, wizard, please assign always the initial state, the shape from load case 2. Not more. In this case, it's enough. And if we go to load combinations, you see the program assigns us, even for this surface structure, this shape from load case 2. And if we run the analysis, um, the program uses this shape and detects us the forces. As you see, now if we go maybe to the characteristic solution, um, we have here maybe um, shape plus surf weight. It's not almost three because surf weight is applied afterwards and if we apply maybe um, um, even the snow load, you see the forces are change have bigger changes because um, the load have effect on the given shape. So even this type of model is possible in the new environment. And now um, we learn that we can use um, pre-stress load cases with form finding loads to find shapes, to organize shapes, to assign shapes to load situations. Um, and um, I want to go the next step and say it's even possible to use shapes based on another shapes. And if you have such a task, um, then you can also use RFM6 for it. And I prepared for this type of analysis a special picture to explain it to you, what we want to do. Uh, this means um, you see now here two <laughs> pictures on top a segment, a ring segment, a 15 degree segment of the stadium below and if you see this, uh, this consists on a primary and a secondary structure. The primary structure is maybe this column with this pressing in back, with this stay cables and this tension cables with this inner ring and this is the primary structure and if this primary structure is set up the workers coming and and hanging in the membrane and yeah, this is the secondary structure and this demands from you that you have maybe shape one for this member structure and shape two for this membrane structure and both could be managed and this we take a look on now and we model uh, this part and afterwards we're going to the stadium structure. So let's uh, go back to RFM. So open a new model. Um, I call it S2. S2. 
and define all tasks what are needed for modeling this part of Stadium. Um, I go to add-ons and say please use form finding and because we have these different stages, so primary and secondary, I activate construction stages and go in. Of course it exists, so overwrite it and um, now let's start. So of course it's not easy to model a whole stadion or a fragment from it. So I prepared a DXF background layer. So I go to background layers and import here a layer from a DXF file called base. And you see this is my DXF data. It's on wrong plane so I rotate it 90 degrees and then by 180 and then everything fits and we can overtake it and please take care that it's activated so active and now we have this let's say basic geometry in our program. You see on the bottom there's a tribune only for imagination and then um, you see here this main element is for primary uh, structure and then the membrane for the secondary structure. At first we model primary, take a look and then we add the secondary part. So let's start modeling these members. I go to the member dialog, the member type beam, let's select a section. So in my case here because I don't uh, move the section, my, my proposals to the final state, but here I would select a diameter of for example 1000 millimeters with a thickness of 10 and um, a material of maybe S2355 uh, so let's go to steel um, according uh, euro code um, select here standard according euro code uh, this one and select the steel here and go and now we can place this column here in the structure so from the bottom to the top and let's add here a bracing member <laughs> what is connected hinged on the bottom so if I activate the hinges and here we have a different cross section for example 600 millimeter diameter with a thickness of 10. Of course this could be optimized according to the check, uh, section proof afterwards. So um, hinges should be hinged on the bottom so define here hinges about Y and C and now we can uh, place here the member between these two points. This structure will not be stable so we have to use now stay cables on it. Um, the stay cables are acting now on the outer fraction of this segment. So at the moment it's only a slice but it will be a, a 15 degree segment. So we have to uh, create it. For this we need a center point of our structure. So because I know here the diameter of the structure is 288 meter, I copy this node. 144 meter in the middle and this is now my center for all rotations and we can create from these nodes now um, the outer points for this segment so I select these three nodes rotate it by seven and a half degree about the global z-axis around this point and apply and now minus 15 degree and OK. So now we get these outer nodes. When we take a top view you see this is maybe the geometry of this 15 degree segment. And now we can place the cables. What means the uninteresting nodes we delete before. Yes. And go to the new member function. Use a cable and now select equivalent sections with an equivalent stiffness. For example here a solid section uh, with a diameter of 80. So now um, we can place it 
here and here and now to the top and now we need maybe some uh, suspension cables to the front here, here we have a different diameter so it's a cable at least um, we use here a solid section again with um, a 30 millimeter diameter and then we can connect maybe the peak uh, point or top point with the front points and maybe make some stabilizing cables back to the back bracing. So this is almost the primary structure for the uh, stadium segment. The only thing what is missing is the tension ring around the structure. Um, let's add it. Um, we take here a cable with a section and maybe here need some more mass. Uh, for example 120 as equivalent section and connect both points and directly define here a middle point so divide member for a later connection of the uh, rich cable. So this is now everything what I have to define for members for the primary state. So I deactivate the DXF that you see what is left and now we have to define the let's say boundary conditions and boundary conditions are let's say the easiest one are supports so we define here a fixation 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 and of course that this front point is not weak we need we need a rotational symmetric uh, boundary condition that this is overtaking loads so I have to simulate this tension ring around. Um, for this I use also nodal supports but I rotate it um, in, in running direction of the cable what means I fixate the degree of freedom in UY direction with a specific direction around 7.5 degree. Okay. Um, yes and now let's copy it that we have it also for the another direction with minus seven and a half and now we can uh, start applying this uh, support here and um, the same the last for this direction and we get a structure what can simulate this tension ring. So the structure itself is now ready the only thing what is missing is the form finding conditions to find the right shape for this structure and if we want to do something with form finding we learned already we need a load case pre-stress so this is G permanent load case and here we need a load case P pre-stress for defining this form finding conditions so let's do it like this um, this uh, entry is done and defined here with uh, member loads type form finding uh, geometric definition so you see we have here different options so we have geometric definition we have force condition but in our case in this type I would say generally he should find the shape with the original length of the cable so I define geometric length by 100% and apply this on all cables. Okay, so now it's done and now we should do a combination of both loads because you have to find the shape according to the surf weight, what is clear. We did this before um, with a load combination but now we expect that we have a shape on another shape so we have to organize shapes before uh, which we can do in the construction stages. Um, in the construction stages we can define now a stage primary uh, or not primary let's say shape one it's easier to understand and we say shape one consists on members and nodal supports and the members I draw a window about everything okay and the nodal supports the same everything good so far okay so the amount of elements is clarified in this stage and the only thing what is missing is 
that the program knows now he should do a form finding for a six stage shape one. What means he should consider six load cases as permanent. And if we calculate this stage with this load selection, it's clear because nothing else is here, he can do a form finding for this type of structure. We get small sacks, um, we get forces, so everything is clear so far. The next point is um, the hanging, the, to hang in the membrane, what I mentioned before. So if we take a look on background layer and set it here, you see now we have to bring in the membrane on the already deflected and loaded shape one. To, the, to do this, I let's say delete mesh and start modeling um, the rest. That means we define, for example, the boundaries of the membrane. It's maybe here, it's running to this point. And even from here to the top, the only problem is now that I have to specify that the cable is not running in, in the other one. So I rotate now my, let's say, grid point plane and use some arc lines to cover this. This I simplify right now for this presentation and pick here the line, the same for this here. Of course, it's not important if this line will match the DXF shape because the form finding application itself will find the right place of structure. So it's not a target. It's only a, let's say, a tendency where it should go. And now we can, let's say, no, no, not completely. We need here a splice cable. So also define here a splice. And if we uh, want to define it here on the perpendicular point, so we can do like this. Now we can deactivate this shape. You see, we specified the boundaries for the membrane and can support now cables on these boundaries. So I select all these lines, go into the library, edit lines and say these lines should hold some members with the type cable and now define the last section, for example, one with 20 millimeters. So far, it's good. And now um, we can maybe bring in some membranes in this uh, cable boundaries. So because it's, this produces some not plane surfaces, I select as initial shape a quadrangular surface uh, with the type membrane and go to the library and this is maybe new. In the library we defined now even fabric material, standard materials with an average set of values of stiffness. And for example, we, we use here the class PTFE type 3 option. The program knows according to defined stiffnesses even the reference thickness of one millimeter here. And now we can place these surfaces in between these cable boundaries. So if we take a look on maybe transparent view, you see the definition is now made and now we only have to mirror um, this stuff on the another side. So use the mirror function, create a copy about X, C plane in the middle and go. So all this is done and now to finalize all this stuff, we have to take care again about boundaries. One type of boundary is clear. We have to fixate these lower corners here and we have still to check that, uh, let's say, the rotational symmetric support is working for this 15 degree segment. This means we have to support these boundary lines. Um, so we use here uh, line support uh, on a local axis in local y direction 
and um, pick these lines here. So, so far this is done, this is so, let's say, a fat green line. I don't like it to <laughs> see it all the time, therefore I deactivate it here with type for lines in display navigator. And now the last point is um, to specify even form finding topics. So we want to pre-stress the membrane with a, let's say, tension load. So let's go to surface load, type form finding, and we can define here the method of application, standard or projection, force or stress. And we say, for example, we have here two kilonewton in X and in Y direction and draw it above the model. So this is done and now only the last final boundary cables are missing. And now <laughs> I see so many loads and I lost my overview. Um, if you have also the same situation, please go to visibilities, generated uh, members by section and activate the last one. And you see these members are left and we can go to member load um, from finding and can select the definition. So geometric you already saw, but we have also force options. And here you get also some more options for shapes. In RFM6 you have now the option to place an average force, maximum force, minimum force on member, uh, a horizontal tension component, a tension at start, at end, a minimum tension at start and end, force density. So there are more options like in the old um, program. We use now average force with, for example, 50 kilonewtons and draw this stuff over the structure and you see the loads are set. So now loads are defined, boundaries are defined. The only thing what is missing now is that the program don't know what is my secondary state. So let's specify it in the stages and say here, please create a new stage and we call it shape two on shape one. Yeah? And for this, we say, okay, please consider also surfaces, please consider also line supports. And because we know no more elements will come, we say all, all, all and all. So elements are clear. So here we know which element should be considered. And in the loads, the program knows it automatically because stage one consists on self weight and pre-stress. So it's a form finding topic because it's permanent. It's the same is acting for the second because it's permanent. So if we calculate now stage two, the program have to detect at first stage one because it's a basis. And now if he have stage one, he calculates stage two. So we have a sequence of shapes. What well, is quite cool function, I would say, and gives us really more, <laughs> a big potential to calculate a lot of structures. And you see now, we have in our structure, um, now when the update is ready, now the shape of the membrane um, on the already defined shape one um, with a new set of forces. Of course, you see here um, maybe even the forces in membrane, um, forces in cables, and, and oh, it's clear you can change back even to stage one what holds only, let's say, the member structures and you get only forces on these elements and not more. So there is a pure organization of, let's say, which element should be considered and which load should be considered and RFM6 have it open for you, is open for your definition. And now if we have, a, let's say, a sequence of shapes, the question will come up, now where I apply my additional loads? Is there not a, a weird situation or a chaos? No, it isn't. So let's create maybe a, a life load or whatever and uh, define here in the load list, um, for example, a Q load where we say, um, 
maybe here this red one and we apply on um, the surfaces um, so a surface load force in projected area maybe 0 0.2 kilonewtons and we draw it over the structure and you see um, it plays uh, the load above the only question is now at which stage should uh, this load be used and clear we have to go back in the load combination menu to the stages and say oh no we have to do something at first we have to give the program a, a, a information what is now the basis for your further calculation and for this we have to create a last final stage and we call it structural calculation calculation on shape 2 and for this uh, we can now start uh, assigning loads what means um, you see shape 1 have a start condition shape 2 basis on shape 1 and shape 3 or stage 3 basis on shape 2 and here we can say please consider the load case 3 variable uh, non-permanent um, in your stage and um, now let's say everything is done for calculation and let's pick in load combination top and what happens the program prepares us um, let's say load combinations for ultimate limit state and for serviceability but if you take a closer look oh initial conditions initial states are not defined so this is not so good but it's the same like for load cases the program have to know for which stage so let's go back and say of course we want to have let's say combinations for all stages and the wizard have to say yes I do it for stages only with newton raphson sulfur and if we go back to load combinations you see the list is a little bit longer but have now a stages allocation stage one stage two stage three here we have two combinations the same for the characteristic ones and as you see we have now here even defined stage two as basis and uh, working on the element set of stage three so even this setting is pre-filled with all load cases now we can start calculating all before I would say um, let's deactivate here these load cases so that we don't have to wait for all and calculate here um, maybe um, maybe simplified a little bit no, we can calculate all. Okay. So now the program calculating all stages uh, at the time. <laughs> let's say one, how to say not not to say it wrong. The program calculate always the load combinations for the stages what are already calculated. So he can't calculate maybe the final combination which bases on a date what is not prepared so far. So now we have to wait to get the analysis of this 14 load situations based on different statical systems. As you see, there are always running on my computer four processes at the same time. Um, this is connected to a solver manager because the program um, uh, have uh, intelligence which searches how many processors are available and shares all this calculation task to these processors to get results back and uh, uses so the complete available hardware what is possible. Of course he cannot over jump stages in this case. So What you also can see 
you can select here um, even every process manually. Um, maybe combination one have here a pretty small deflection, combination two have a bigger one because the membrane is moving from its origin place to the to the uplifted place, which is a, a longer way <laughs> from uh, in space to to go. So now results are ready. You see maybe nothing according to so many loads, but uh, what is clear. Um, you see here, for example, let's uh, open maybe combination three, what is uh, here uh, surf weight and pre-stress uh, in these different shapes. So this is maybe a little bit scaled, but um, um, now uh, even you can select the different stages with the different situations. No? And this brings us to the state how I can do maybe or check if now membrane and members so far okay. And for this you can activate in the calculation add-ons uh, here is the option for example stress strain analysis and with activation of the stress strain analysis um, you get here in your table of option stress strain uh, where you can say what should be calculated and for example for members we say hmm, please check for us for example you can select between all these stress components it's endless and I think those are boring. So from my point of view, sigma equivalent is enough and check it um, against limit equivalent stress and apply. For surfaces, you also have the same option. Um, here you can say um, equivalent stress is not so good here, but you can say please check sigma x and y with a user-defined stress, for example, uh, 35 and here also use uh, for example 25. So it depends on you what the limit stress is and now um, if you run it you get here um, maybe a, a, a utilization check for all these elements according to stresses um, what are coming from all these stages. So now we get a result. Of course, now the sh nice shape of the form found shape disappears because this is valid for all uh, load combinations from different stages. So the program draws the shape on the original shape. But um, this is one point. Now you see we get results for members and for surfaces. So let's deactivate it first for surfaces and deactivate it here for example stress ratios, um, hide the mesh, make maybe a wireframe model and you see um, okay almost all cables fit, the rest we have to rework so here we have some red one so you, have, you need a bigger cross section so this could be visualized and you get also a result table on it, stresses on member by stages, by design situation or by section where you get the table. Um, this one where is maybe the limit state for the different cross section, for example. No? The same for, let's say, surfaces. Um, here we have also utilization and you see maybe stresses on surfaces. Um, so far um, the grid points are fine. Um, Stress is by material, by thickness, by surface. You get always a table where the existing with the limit is compared and get a check or not. So far. Now um, you see this is the way of design and if you have to bring all this calculation on a paper, we often our program a, a printed report. Um, this printed report could be opened here and uh, of course at first you have to give a scope what should be everything inside. Um, take a look, uh, you get maybe all options, maybe basic objects, node, materials, all these topics could be uh, bring in in shape of a table, even stress analysis what we activated and here you can say hmm, error warnings are not interesting for surfaces, I want to 
document maybe a table surface by surface number and save and show me these tables. Now the program creates a report um, where we maybe get a sum up of all input data according to the scope what we just defined. It's a styled document um, where you see with a, a cover um, with a content uh, list and also all data like sections, members are visualized with nice small pictures, explaining pictures that the reader of the document understand what is going on. Um, you can zoom it if it's needed and of course the results what we just looked on are defined so here's our list for cross sections for surfaces so even this list what we see in main program could be visualized in this document and uh, if you are forced to make it more reader friendly you can add also some pictures so jump back so the program, the menu is parallel opened and you can say please print me a picture of the member utilizations into the document, uh, print that report and say here <coughs> um, um, please make me a window filling picture uh, with a high of 50% um, of page high and um, yeah okay and make me a utilization picture of the surface uh, utilization from top view um, with values on surfaces um, with um, maybe extreme values so everything is possible you can create your own pictures what uh, expected and let's go to print and um, move it into reports the same for the y direction and print and if it fits um, we update the report so now the program is updated you see the pictures are inserted in time and the process is still running and we can work with this document and when it's updated it maybe um, is it's regenerated and you have all these pictures inside so this is not a big deal and um, to bring in some result pictures and what is not nice here if the maybe uh, color scale is inside the picture and it uh, is not so good so you can go to properties and can say please print color scale outside graphics and uh, the program is updating the pictures where the scale is outside so to round it up um, finally you could be forced to make some description of your structure um, and you have if you have some prepared PDFs or whatever you can read it in so um, go to insert insert PDF um, go to maybe I have here my folder for webinar I have maybe a PDF of the website from Antonio Farrer about the stadium in Riyadh um, we can bring it in by one click and you have it here um, imported it has it's not a, a bottleneck regarding performance so you can also still work with this report and jump to different positions and create a final documentation for your clients so um, maybe this was one workflow how to work with the program to create uh, uh, maybe shapes based on another shapes and now um, maybe we can think about how to finalize all this analysis and for this is maybe a look into the low case list important because we did now only maybe basic checks on this small 15 degree check but um, to do a full analysis you also have to consider wind loads and wind loads is now let's say for this type of structure not so easy because we have no concept how the load distribution is looking like and therefore a question come up how we can uh, um, how, how big the loads from wind are and maybe 
um, you can solve it by a real wind tunnel test or what we can offer you can uh, place your structure in a numerical wind tunnel and for this you, have, you need a full model, not only a 50 degree segment, therefore um, you can uh, say um, please um, take this structure and rotate it maybe here by 15 degree around this center with um, 23 steps and confirm this setting and you will see that um, it's not a big deal to uh, create such a big stadium model now because uh, if you have your system of your structure and you modeled quite clear it's no big deal to bring in or to combine it as a bigger model even the stages topic all this is not so critical um, um, and now if you have such a model you can place it completely in a numerical wind tunnel and uh, because this takes some calculation time I prepared here a model for you so I jump now let's say in another RFM and move it here on this side so this is the same, almost the same structure even with these stages what we just discussed the only difference is the main difference is that I created here a wind load case and um, this wind load case like you see in analysis type have a different flag and this different flag coming because um, in add-ons is uh, also activated the wind simulation and if you activated the wind simulation um, you get the option that you can define here in analysis type uh, wind simulation um, this opens for you two new uh, registers here and you can say please use this model with maybe this stage and this shape um, for a wind simulation in a numerical wind tunnel um, where the wind medium is according to this density, kinematic viscosity, this turbulence model and meshing um, with maybe this wind profile what could be defined, user defined in a table or according to any standards and uh, the wind uh, is coming from this angular direction so here you specify maybe the medium around the model, the input wind speed and the size of wind tunnel with the input wind speed and if you calculate this load case um, this is a two-step process what means the program is moving the model in background into a numerical wind tunnel according all defined settings calculating wind, wind uh, the wind medium around the model let's take a look you see um, calculating here maybe this is the numerical wind tunnel structure you see wind tunnel with input window and now the program or this process detecting um, maybe the pressure around the structure um, now this is only a, maybe a slice of it but but you can see how the pressure is changing um, you can also say um, please show me results in this slice it calculates the wind velocity around the structure and even the wind's direction yeah so and with this information the wind flow for the structure could be let's say detected um, and according to this information the program can let's say calculate the pressure on the structure um, you see um, if it's updated that we have here in front of course some pressure here some suction suction or below 
um, how to see even in the back section. So all this influence is given then and these forces, these pressures are given back to our fam to this load case with wind analysis and could be used or are used for a, a subsequent static analysis. And um, this this is a two-step uh, calculation what I just mentioned and leads to the situation that um, you can, um, it's running, um, can detect for um, these forces, new internal forces in this structure. Now it's ready and you see if I activate, let's say, the loads, you see this is maybe the wind tunnel, if we show everything you see this is the input wind speed like we just saw for zero degree in X and now if I activate forces you see also this is now the structure answer of the wind simulation we see loads what wind simulation calculated on the structure. Here we have for example um, the internal forces, normal axis forces, maybe uh, only uh, I rotated that we have now, yeah exactly and even we get deflections on the structure, all this let's say feedback of the structure is now given um, according to this load and now with this information and this real load distribution of wind load you can go ahead like I just uh, showed you before you can start combination of these loads calculate maybe uh, loads for ultimate limit state and serviceability state and feed it into this design add-ons for example stress strain or steel design uh, as, as you have to do according to the rules of the buildings and this brings me now to the end of my uh, webinar and I give back to Andreas. Okay, thank you Andreas for this nice presentation. I hold back the screen. Because I would like to give you an additional information, a general information. Uh, in RFM 6 and R sub 9 we have new um, the, the Luba sender. You can open this with this button. I open it and bring it here on the screen. Okay, and then you have here my account. And you can find yeah, a lot of information here. For example, my messages. We have to wait some time. Okay, here new version, recorded webinars, etc. Then your personal data, the company data, the users, um, quotes, invoices, etc. Uh, licenses, products to download, the newest version can you find here. This, that's the new generation of M6, R sub 9 and that's the old generation and then quite important the development uh, you can see uh, implemented features here open features in the single programs you can submit bugs you can uh, submit uh, your yeah, uh, request of, of a new feature and we decide if it will be implemented and so on and you can find this or can reach this account also from the website here under my account you can log in here and if you haven't uh, any account you can create a new account it's for free those are yeah, free information for you another tip is you can find it on, under education and e-learning, e sorry, education, e-learning, and then RFM6 for beginners. If you want to start with RFM6 or you can recommend it uh, to, our, to your colleagues, that's a yeah, tutorial with 20 videos and yeah, 
that's that would be a good start in the new program generation. Okay, then at the last information, uh, the yeah, some of you asked if the uh, webinar will be recorded. Yes, you will get an email in some days, and on our website under news and events, you can find it as well under webinars you can find today's webinar here you you will get an uh, email with a direct link to that page and then the next days you will find the recording here the presentation slides with additional information about you know, our free tools for example the FAQ the knowledge database and so on and then here are the two models to download okay that brings me to the end I say thank you for your attention thanks to my colleagues thanks to Andreas for the nice presentation thanks to Stefan for answering the questions uh, I wish all a nice rest of the day Stay healthy. Bye-bye.